Daniel Boone, call him what you want. He was fired up today. Kelchner on third and goal. Play action. Wide open is Rodney Woodard. 10-7 ears at the end of three. But Ryan Collins was brilliant. He brings Miami back. Watch the scramble here. The athletic ability. Does Costa make this play? I don't think so. He sprints to the sideline, ducks under the defender, circles back around, appears to be in deep trouble, but fires downfield. And look at the arm. This was into a slight wind. A.C. Tellison hauls it in. He will step out of bounds at the four-yard line. But they would take it in and make it 14-10. The Mountaineers right back with under seven minutes to go. Robert Walker, the brilliant runner, walks in from 20 yards out. 17-14. It's the biggest home field victory in West Virginia history. They are one game away from the undefeated season. It's the first ever Big East loss. Brett, a great performance out of this team two weeks in a row. It's Glenn Foley, Ivan Boyd in the end zone, a brilliant catch. 17-7, Boyd, three touchdowns in the first half. In the fourth quarter, it's 38-17 BC. But Kevin McDougal hands off to Lee Becton. A sixth straight 100-yard game for Becton, 38-23. Irish go for two. McDougal to Becton, the throwback. He gets it in there, they cut the lead to 13. Holtz sensing another miracle comeback. It's 38-32 in the fourth quarter. McDougal looking long for Derek Mays. The brilliant catch sets up another scoring opportunity. Fourth and goal from the four. McDougal, nice play action fake across the middle. Lake Dawson hauls it in. 39-38 Irish after the extra point, but they left Glenn Foley a few seconds. The celebration is premature. A key penalty set the Eagles up at the 25. They started marching. Versus has got to make this catch. If he does, they're still number one in the nation. He drops the interception. That sets up David Gordon. He had missed a field goal earlier in the year. He was warming up, but Foley had to get him closer, first of all. And Pete Mitchell's there for 23 yards. So the Notre Dame, 33. A lot of prayer on both sidelines as Gordon, the son of the Hartford Whalers owner, the southpaw lines up from 41 yards. Is he going to hook? No, it straightens out, goes through as the clock expires. Boston College upsets the top-ranked Irish. And BC avenges last year's humiliation. They've won eight in a row. Foley, 30 of 48, 315 yards and four touchdowns. Tom Coughlin afterward said he knew all along the Irish wouldn't quit. And we may have been a little tentative. You know, hoping that the game would uh, would come to an end and, and knowing full well that it wouldn't, you'd have to, we believe that you got to win the game, you got to take the game, nobody's going to give you a game, it's particularly a team with the talent and ability of Notre Dame. All of a sudden we're down, we look up and it's 109 and we've played, we've been a, a good team in two minute drill for two years. Glenn Foley does an excellent job with it, so I felt, I really did honestly feel that we could take the ball down. We talked about we needed a field goal. To be honest with you, the ball just having, uh, Ivan Boyd's ability to get it in the middle really helped us at the end, and, uh, and that's something that, you know, you just don't plan. The kid's going full speed trying to make a play, and he ends up in the middle of the field, and thank God for it. It sets up a huge game, Friday, 4 o'clock Eastern time, King to build his credibility. But the tide were rolling early. They run the reverse, and Kevin Lee takes off 63 yards for a touchdown. Alabama, a 14-5 lead at halftime. Things seem to get worse for Auburn. Stan White, for the second straight year, carried off the field against Alabama. This time, a knee injury. Last year, it was a shoulder. I've been saying all along that Auburn is a great team. So what do they do? Somebody from the bench. Substitute quarterback steps in. Patrick Nix. His first pass attempt of the game. Frank Sanders, 35-yard touchdown. Closed the gap 14-12. Then a field goal by Etheridge. Put the Tigers up 15-14. And James Bostic. Finally puts the tide away. Ball to the 30. Bostic takes it and takes off. They're not going to get him. 70 yards for a touchdown, and Auburn goes on for a wild one. Where are they partying more tonight, Auburn or Morgantown? That's a tough call. The Tigers beat Alabama. They complete the perfect season at 11-0, the first time a Division 1A coach has ever started 11-0. Terry Bowden is an absolute folk hero. He's a god down there. Afterwards, Steve Cypher spoke with Bostic. James, was the plan in the second half to go to you on the ground? Well, that was our plan to start the clock down and run it, because they stopped the first half, but like I said, the running game was our game plan, and we went through the second half, and it was done. Is it bittersweet today knowing you're 11 and 0, but knowing this is where it ends? Well, yeah, you know, like I said, we have a long vacation, but we have, we have something to celebrate about. We let them know.
Congratulations. Thank you very much, James. Back to you in the studio. All right, Steve, a sweet ending. They won't go to the SEC championship game. Florida will. They'll play Alabama, but the two highest-ranked teams in the conference, the Tigers and the Vols, will not be there in all likelihood. Tennessee finishes up regular season by beating Kentucky 48-0. Check it. The Vols have one more game against Vanderbilt. Should they win? Going driving. Wayne Cook, the play fake. Touchdown, 7-zip UCLA. It's 17-0 in the third when USC finally awakens. Rob Johnson, Ken Grace. Great catch and run. He doesn't get in down to the one-yard line, but Sean Walters made it 17-7 from there. Then J.J. Stokes gets in on things. Cook, the 17-yard strike at 24-14. It's 27-21 UCLA. Two minutes to go. Johnson finds Johnny Morton to midfield. Next play. Johnson looking for Grace. And Grace under pressure hauls it in, takes it down to the two. Third and goal. It's intercepted by Marvin Goodwin to preserve the victory. The second straight heartbreaker for Johnson and the Trojans and the Bruins break a streak against USC. When the Rose Bowl on the line for both of them, they lost 10 in a row to the Trojans. That's history. UCLA is headed for Pasadena to play on their home field. Other side of the equation. Gone. John Cooper's Buckeyes against Michigan. He never beaten them. You know that. First quarter scoreless game. Tyrone Wheatley. 43 yards. Knocked out of bounds. Led to this touchdown. Mercury Hayes. Watch the pretty grab from Todd Collins. 7-0 Michigan in the second quarter lead. He watched the reverse play. Todd Collins fakes the reverse and throws a long bomb to Derek Alexander. The reason why that worked is they had run that reverse earlier and the safety had come up. That's right, Coach. You're down 14 0. But Brett Powers in a quarterback replacing Bobby Hoying. What a throw. Picked off by Chuck Winters. Led to a Che Foster touchdown. Little three yard grab. 21 0 Michigan. Third quarter. OSU in a punt. But Tim Williams, the right knee is down. And that's where Michigan takes over. It led to this. Ed Davis kind of scuttles into the end zone, and the Wolverines destroy the Buckeyes. 28 0, the first shutout of Ohio State in 137 games. Cooper 0 5 1 versus Michigan. The 16 game regular season unbeaten streak is over, and Ohio State could have clinched the Rose Bowl. Now much lost Wisconsin in the last couple of games. Barry Alvarez back in the hunt. The Badgers dominating Illinois on the ground. Terrell Fletcher around right end, six yards. Wisconsin more than 200 yards rushing in the air. Daryl Bevel to the tight end. Mitchell Roan, 24 yards. It's 21-3 Badgers. Third quarter, not a replay, but Bevel over the middle. Roan, 23-yard touchdown. Three touchdown passes for Bevel today. And the Badgers one step away from Pasadena, the final is 35-10 as the Illini now at 5 and 6 out of it. Fletcher 139 yards. So the Rose Bowl decided on the other side of the globe two weeks from tonight. And ESPN 3 AM in the first quarter. Corey Pullick dumps it off to Tony Harrison. Turns on the Jets. 71 yards later, it's 21-3 Aggies. Gigum. It's 28-3 in the second quarter. <laughs> Pullick will hand off to Greg Hill. The ball at the six-yard line, and Hill right up the gut. Well, they got a glove on him there. They're not going to get him now. 94 yards on the touchdown run. A&M romps, and Greg Hill rushes for 125 yards and a couple of touchdowns. They tie the Southwest Conference record now, their 21st consecutive win. But the race isn't over for the Cotton Bowl because Texas beat Baylor. 38-17, Shea Range throws for two touchdowns. So that means that the Thanksgiving battle at Kyle Field closes with a victory. They're not a pretty football team, but they are 8-3. and three. And they're bowl-bound. Steve Tannehill threw three interceptions. Colorado struggled, but beat Jim Walden's Iowa State team 21-16 to finish at 7-3-1. Another big day for Charles Johnson. Kansas State wins in Stillwater as the Pokes finish the Big 8 uh, season winless. Penn State struggled early, pulled away to beat Northwestern. Mike Archie, 173 yards and two touchdowns. And Indiana wins the old Oaken Bucket, 24-17. They talked some trash this week, but they backed it up. And the Boilermakers' worst season, John Walsh. Found Bryce Doman in the end zone, 14-10 now. It's 24-23. The Cougars had the lead in the fourth quarter when Mike McCoy pitches to Jamal Anderson. Up the middle for a touchdown, 31-24 after the two-pointer. Utes back in front. Less than a minute to play. Chris Jurgensen, a 55-yarder. He knocks it through, and Utah wins the beehive boot on that long boot, 
31. McCoy, 434 yards, three touchdowns. He did have two interceptions, but Utah hands a very damaging loss in the WAC to BYU. But maybe not quite as damaging as it could have been because Wyoming loses to Colorado State 41-21. That's the battle for the bronze boot, the second WAC loss for Wyoming. And we'll continue with more. New Mexico, 35-29, a winner over UTEP at the Sun Bowl, the first winning season for Los Lobos since 1981. We'll continue. Wow, first quarter, no score, fourth and goal from the three. Charlie Ward rolls right, runs it, and sneaks in. First of nine TDs for the Seminoles. Florida State spanks the Wolfpack 62-3. Ward was 27 of 36 for 278 yards and threw for four touchdowns. He a big game here, hooks up with Joey Kent, corner of the end zone, 23 yards, and the score, Kent had two touchdowns. Then Schuler, let me go, move it around. How about a different target? Goes to Corey Fleming on the screen. He does most of it on his own, 19 yards for the score. Fleming had a pair of touchdowns as well. Schuler, three touchdowns. Tennessee wins easy, 48-0. Fleming sets a Tennessee record with an 18th career touchdown catch. Charlie Garner goes over the 1,000-yard rushing mark on the year. 10-7 Harvard, Steve Mills. Play action fake, finds a wide open Dave Iwan for a 45-yard score. 14-10 Yale on top. Fourth quarter late, 33-22 Yale. Mike Girardi drops back and fires 77 yards to Mark Beggert for the TD. Two-point conversion good. 33-31 Yale on top. Harvard got the ball back with one second left. Girardi coughs it up as he's hit. Yale wins. 33-31, the 67-year-old Restick said after the game, that's the way it goes, that's the end of the game and the end of my era. And here's the rest of the games for the top 25, Colorado, Iowa State, second half, CU's Lamont Warren takes the pitch and throws it to Charles Johnson, halfback option, a 49-yard score, Colorado wins 21-16. K-State, Oklahoma State, OSU's Boogie Johnson takes the handoff in the fourth, runs in circles, and he'll hit. Raphael Dennison, the extra effort TD tied at 14, then with no timeouts, Wildcats. Cap an 80-yard drive with a two-yard score. Chad May to Brad Sox.